Alright guys, welcome to the episode of Strike. Now we're actually finishing our demonstration series with the snake that people are most afraid of. So when they see the snake I have here in this container, they're in fact more afraid than when they see any other snake. And of course I'm talking about a cobra because the cobra can spread this hood like a visual warning sign and people are instantly intimidated by that more actually than when they see a black mamba because there are gray snakes everywhere that resemble the look of the black mamba what you look at is the face you know so it's really hard to actually um, detect the black mamba from some other snakes we have here for example the grass snakes so this right here is a cobra and we have two common cobra species in the area here at the Kinyonga Reptile Center one is the Mozambique spitting cobra and the other one is called a snouted cobra it's my favorite snake in fact and it was formerly known as the Egyptian cobra but they actually found out that the snouted cobra has like a snouted scale on the tip of its nose and that is why they actually made this one a distinct species and split it apart from the uh, former Egyptian cobra that you can now find more in the northern parts of Africa now it's a very warm day today so the snake might be quite active and here it comes so we call this specimen here C15 so that's its name there come on buddy and there you can already see the hood it's spreading because it doesn't know what's going on. It's confused now. That's why it spreads the hood like that. And this right here is in fact like a very typical coloration for the snouted cobra. Now I'll put it here nicely so you can see it perfect. Look at this one. A huge specimen but they get much bigger than this. I would reckon this one here is about like 1 meter 80 in length. But they get to about 3 meters actually. If you're lucky you might come across like a 3 meter one but that's very rare. Usually they stay around like 2 meters, 2 meters 10. And this right here is of course a highly venomous species. They have the worst venom of them all. So basically it's the same venom as of a black mamba. It's called like a neurotoxic venom. So it's a nerve affecting venom. So if this snake would bite here, unlike the puff adder, I don't have 2 or 4 days. Or like the um, bomb slung, I don't have like 7 days. In fact when this one bites me I could be dead within like 30 minutes. But usually I say you have about like two hours to four hours depending of course on many factors for example where the snake bites how much venom they inject how your body reacts to the venom and of course how big you are if you just weigh in like 40 kilos you're gonna be much you're gonna be dead quicker than a person that is just weighing in oh look at this one that's a mock strike right there you see that then a person that's just weighing in about 80 kilos for example so now what i'm going to do is i will demonstrate the fact that you can already see here, snakes are trying to get away from us, never towards us. And in fact, there are snakes everywhere here in Africa, like mambas, cobras like these, and we never ever see them. Why? Because they're very secretive animals. They rather hide away from us than to be detected by us. So now I'm going to take this hide here. Come on, buddy. Get back in here. Settle down now. Calm down. There you go. So I got this hide right here. Now what I will do is I will show the cobra the hide and if it sees it, I can guarantee you it's like an instinct. It will see the hide and go in and hide away from me rather than come towards me. So let's see if it sees the hide. There you go. And now it goes in there. It's like an instinct. Something switches. It's the first chance you give them to escape and they will take it. Now, oftentimes though, they might also hide in your house, you know, so you might find a snake like this hiding in your house under something, so this right here could also be a toy of a child, could be anything you have in your garage for example, come on buddy, go in there nicely, and even if you see here now, I'm just touching the tail there and it's not coming out again, and even if I walk next to this um, hide now, it will not come out and bite me, no, they won't do that, because now it's safe in there, it's feeling very safe, so it doesn't have the need to come out of the hide. So now we're going to actually take the hide away to see the typical behavior of the cobra with the spreading the hood, okay? So let's see, we're picking just something up, somewhere in our garage, and look, there's a cobra like this. And now it spreads the hood. So the first warning they give us is basically getting away from us. They hide wherever they can. All snakes are deaf but they sense vibrations on the ground. So as we walk, they know far before we actually see them that we are coming to their territory and they hide underneath a tree, they go up in a tree even, or they hide wherever they can, even in like an uh, old termite mound. This is why it's very hard to detect the snake. 
But if you then corner or confront the snake like this, they will give us this visual warning of the hood. You can see there. And in fact, the snouted cobra has the biggest and most impressive hood of any cobra species in the world. And elephants or buffalo, any big animal here in Africa, when they see the sign of a cobra spreading a hood, they know out of instinct that this snake is highly dangerous and they go around it like this. They never walk towards a cobra. No elephant would ever walk here when he sees a cobra hooding like this. It's their instinct. And as I said, when people see a snake like this, they're very afraid of it. Now, unfortunately, some people, they think though that this sign right here is aggressive and this snake is now showing me aggression. So what they try to do is they try to chase the snake away. Now let's see if that actually works. If they come here like this, come on, get away from me. And now you see it's opening its mouth and performing what we call a pretend bite, a mock strike basically. It knows it's not really biting me or the um, hide, but it's rather opening a mouth and just coming forward like this. It's like, watch out, if you continue that, I will strike. And as I said, the venom is no joke. So at least at that point, at the third warning, you should leave the snake alone. And if you continue to do that a couple times, the snake will actually get tired of doing those smog strikes. And what they do then is they start playing dead. So they will stick their tongue out, roll on their back, and they will smell like rotten meat. And that's the fourth warning. And then if you still try to pick him up or neck him behind the head, then they can lose temper and bite. So like all snakes, as I said, it's quite an effort to get bitten by them. Even the black mamba, I showed you the bomb sign, I showed you the puff adder. And this one right here also gives us a couple warning signs. They don't bite easy. And if you then actually get bitten, you know that you've ignored four or five warning signs. And then you basically deserve to get bitten if you try to kill the snake with a stick or chase it away. And also interesting with the snake is you cannot touch it anywhere. If I touch it here, it bites me easy. If I touch it there, it can bite me easy. So as I walk around here, you can see the snake always is on to me. It will have me in its focus all the time. You see, I'm walking this side now, and the snake is still looking at me. Now I walk this side, it's still looking at me. Now I try to come back this side. Maybe now I can make it behind the head. Still doesn't work, it's still on to me. So they react to movement, so when I walk, they always focus on me. So there's no way I can touch the snake anywhere right now without risking to get bitten. So now even though I walked around the snake, I tried to chase it away, you can actually see, it's still in the same position. It didn't even move yet. So I'm here. Snake, I'm here. I'm just about 50 centimeters away. It's not coming like this, bah, boom, biting me, no. Why? Because snakes are not aggressive, they are defensive. It's just defending its body now. Because if I would have, if I would try to touch the snake or mongoose would try to bite the snake, as I said, there's no way you can come close without risking a bite. So it's just trying to defend itself. It's just trying to stay alive. The same thing that you would do if someone would basically try to kill you with a stick, you know? So it's not coming towards me to bite me because it doesn't want to waste its venom. It gives me warning sign after warning sign. And um, even if you ignore those warning signs, they might still give you something that's called like a dry bite. They would just inject no venom, but rather just bite, you know? So you basically leave it alone. That's the last warning that they do. Now what shall you do if you walk to Kruger National Park and you encounter a snake like this, maybe basking. So you walk through their territory like this. You walk, you walk, you walk, and boom, there's a the snake. Now the best thing for you to do is basically stand still because snakes will never, ever strike at stationary objects. And then what you do is you move back slowly. Cobras have a very bad eyesight. So the snake still thinks I'm standing right here. And now I can ease myself out of the situation unharmed. And that is basically how you do with any snake. It's a, if it's a puff adder, if it's a black mamba, just stand still. And then assess the situation, move back slowly, and then you will always be fine. As I said, never try to catch a snake, never try to kill a snake, because that's where people will get bitten. Right? It's not that they walk to Kruger National Park or anywhere in Africa or even Australia. They step on a snake or they come close to a snake like this, they bite. No, they don't do that. Actually, it takes quite an effort to get bitten and they only bite if you try to catch or kill them. So this right here is an elephant species, of course, has front fixed fangs, very small fangs in the front of their mouth. Um, and their favorite food would actually be 
um, something like rats, mice, also prey on other food. For example, they also prey on other snakes. For example, the puff adder. So oftentimes they eat the puff adder. They can also eat the black mamba. They also eat the um, bomb stung, for example. So when this snake bites the bomb stung, the puff adder, the black mamba, they all die. If a black mamba bites the um, snotted cobra or a puff adder, basically will have no effect because the snake is immune to the venom. Puff adder, for example, could only kill the snake if the fangs would go through the head or a vital organ like the heart or the lung. So, incredible snake here is now the cobra. And it's also the snake that is believed to have killed Cleopatra. And she chose a snake like this, actually the Egyptian cobra, like the relatives, because their venom basically doesn't put you in pain. So it's a quick acting venom and um, you basically just feel numb. You start to feel dizzy and then you faint out because of the lack of oxygen. The way you die from the snake within one, two, three, four hours is because of respiratory failure. So your brain and body will not be able to communicate properly anymore and you basically will just start to, um, you will not be able to breathe properly anymore. Lack of oxygen and then you just paint out. As I said, it's almost the same venom as that of a black mamba. It's very, very fast acting on our, in our bodies. So oftentimes people be bitten by a snake like this and they die before they can actually get medical attention because as I said the venom just acts so quick on them. It's very unfortunate. The beautiful snake, we should rather have more respect for them than fear them. Alright, so now I try to put it back nicely. It's still hooding, perfect. Look at the specimen here. I love this one. Come on here. Look at the size of it, beautiful one, a snouted cobra. Right, in you go. Beautiful job, it's not a cobra. My favorite snake in the world, and an awesome one, another one that you don't need to be afraid of, even if you see it spreading the hood, be afraid, go away from it. Don't try to catch a kill and you'll be safe. Make sure to subscribe for more wild adventures and I'll see you next time.